So I wanted to do a, a grisaille painting for you, or at least start one to give you an idea how to go about it when we are back in the classroom. So it'll give you a chance to see me actually work on a painting. I'm working flat. I normally would not work flat. You know, I'm, I'm an upright person or at an angle. I paint usually at an angle. Um, sometimes I might sit and put something across my lap, but for the most part, I, I would be working on a wall or on an easel. So I set up a, a still life, okay? With a few colored objects as well as gray and black objects just to give me a chance, give me a chance to, um, or give you a chance to see me operate. I have a selection of brushes, some fresh water. Um, I've, I've laid out my palette. I've kept it, <coughs> excuse me, the way I have. This is the, this is the uh, glass scraper, which would actually remove pigment. You see how it kind of just shaves it off. I left the color out on the palette where it's still fresh and I might, be using it as a way to tint. So since I put a brown ground down, I'm going to draw. Now there's a couple ways to go about drawing. I, I'm going to map my drawing out with just some paint, lightly, almost like a wash. Just so I get an idea of where to go. I'm not making any color choices, obviously. It's all gonna be, um, you know, black, white, and gray, warm and cool. So this is the tomato itself. I wanna include that feather right there, which I kinda of like. See how thin I'm painting things? I'm measuring the whole time where things are in relation to other things. There's a feather that curves its way around. So this is just another way of drawing. And I, you know, the bird's nest that I have, I have, I'm gonna paint a bird's nest in this one. So I'm gonna make some decisions as far as the grays go, as I block it in a little bit. Change things up a tiny bit. Now I'm kind of mapping my highlights. If I run out of pigment, I'll just add a little more water. I want to keep it thin to begin. Even though I'm working with highlights, I may want to start searching for shadow. And if you find a highlight, invariably, there's going to be a shadow on the opposite side of it. So I'm still using black and white, but I'm starting to tint a little bit. As I go, I'm starting to think about different tones. 
I'll start limiting the color. Start concentrating more on value. I'm only using one brush at this point. I may switch to a second brush in a minute here. Now the the box I'm painting is sitting on top of brown, but the brown is kind of warmish. So I'm going to push a warmer brown into the background. It's actually kind of purple. And I'm going to continue to warm that brown with a little bit of yellow right now. Yeah. Now I've taped around the edges of my... I'm painting on canvas paper. Sorry, I didn't mention that. I'm painting on canvas paper. Trying to put a little shadow around the tomato. We're thinking in the brown gray family. This cloth, or this plastic here, is cooler than the tomato itself, so I put blue into my gray to cool it off. It may be too dark a value, but I'll go back into it in the middle, in a minute. If I think it's too dark. I'm working with a round, a round brush, smallish, um, it's a two, got a long handle. I'm going to start, instead of jumping around now, I'm going to start focusing on a few things. First thing I'm going to focus on is, is I want to paint the plastic, and I'm going to paint the plastic gray-blue, the entire thing.
I switched out my brush. I'm using the flat, long bristle. I sometimes keep extra cups of water, which allows me to <clears throat> clean off the paint with one cup and then get fresher water with the second cup. So there's a great plastic bag that this is all sitting on, which creates some really nice reflections. It gives me a chance to, to work with something a little more complex. You know, it keeps the, keeps the light bouncing off the surface. It's not a bad start. Now I'm starting to tighten up some of my forms, just drawing them out a little bit. There's a feather in the foreground. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit it completely in the composition. So if I can't fit it completely in the composition, I probably won't put it in.
Choosing your brush is important. Rounds do certain things really particularly well. You can spin a mark. Um, <clears throat> when I get brushes, one of the things, the first things I do is I actually kind of test the limitations of what the mark, what the mark the brush can make is. I mean, just because a brush is like this, a flat with a long handle, doesn't mean that you can't paint with the side, paint with the tip, paint with all the bristles down, change your motion as you go and change the stroke that you get from it. And as you use brushes, they wear more and more. They kind of adapt, you know, like a comfortable glove fitting over your hand. You know, when you first put a glove on it, it kind of, it's your size, but it doesn't fit you exactly. Um, as you use it over and over and over again, um, you begin to more and more, you know, adapt your, your hand, makes the glove adapt to how it fit, how it should fit. So, um, let's see. Let's go back in here. I might go for looking for, I'm gonna go looking for some real darks now. Some of the darker shades that I have in this, kind of map them out just as straight black and then I'll go back from them. Because the canvas paper is small, the round, the size of the round fits it better and lets me manipulate it a little bit um, like I wish. inadvertently grabbed a little green there. Go get a little extra red. Looking for a warmer gray. I just dipped a little bit in the water there too. So although this is mostly gray, I have tinted a little bit with color to try to create some warmth to get a better understanding of how close in value, how you can change the closeness and value by by temperature 
not just by light and dark. I think that's where I'm going to stop right now.